Okay, so now what I'm going to do is uh, focus on uh, the input from the transformer that comes in through uh, this connector here. Uh, we have AC, uh, we have a bridge rectifier here which are these four pins and the two outer pins are AC with positive and negative in the middle there uh, they come out to two capacitors here. Uh, the larger bridge rectifier has AC in the center uh, and positive and negative on the outside and they go to a couple of uh, uh, capacitors here and here. Um, so I'm going to see uh, without that other unit plugged in what voltage we have at those points um, and uh, if I can find any markings on the board to compare uh, with, 20 volts, uh, 20 volts, 10 volts and uh, and that's indicative of what I've been uh, measuring on the capacitors with it unplugged. Um, I notice they stay charged for quite some time. Um, and uh, uh, then with the other uh, unit plugged in, I will check them while it's plugged in uh, and see if that's pulling down at that side of it or if it's happening uh, later on. So I'll turn it on. Interestingly enough, sometimes it doesn't turn on right away. Um, that could be a red flag. Um, if you turn it on... Relay clicks a couple of times and uh, nothing really happens. Well, maybe it does have to have the AMP module plugged in. That would be a nuisance. Alright, let me grab the AMP. Um, one other thing I just realised, of course, this is um, a soft on. It's not a big mains, clunky main switch, so uh, there is always power uh, active because um, it needs it for the uh, micro to uh, register the uh, soft on switch. So um, if I probe what's coming out of here, there we have our minus 27.6, so this is likely where our minus 30 is supposed to come from, and the other rec uh, bridge rectifier is at minus 43, uh, which is going to give us our... Uh, plus and minus oops, plus and minus 20 volt rail <clears throat> which is slightly higher um, but there's no real load on that at the moment um, so if I was to monitor the output there for our minus 30 volt rail and uh, turn it on when I do that and it refuses to turn on. There it goes. Didn't really drop a great deal. Let's get that amp plugged in and see what happens. Okay, it didn't need the amp plugged in at all. It's not too happy with its uh, board being flipped upside down like that. Whether there's a loose connection there or something, uh, that's interesting I gave it a bit of a wiggle and repositioned it and now it's staying on um, so let's recheck those voltages uh, back in here and we've got our minus 26 there and our uh, plus and minus 20 and uh, the next step will be to plug in the other module and uh, see what we're getting. Pretty sure this is our ground reference there. So if I have a look up here, we've, they call it FL bias, uh, fluoro bias, and that's at minus 30. So, right, <clears throat> plug that in and see if it turns back on. <laughs> Uh, 
Okay, I've got the thing to stay on, but I've got no display. Now, the uh, bias line is actually, now it's down to th minus 4. So it has, it has dropped. It wasn't minus 30 until I switched it on. So obviously, the uh, control line that uh, tells the thing to turn on is causing something to happen. Uh, something adverse when it tries to fire up. Let's trace that back. It goes to there. Uh, which goes to there. Which goes into... There's a capacitor there. That transistor there. If we have a look on either side, what do we got there? Minus four. Yeah. And uh, comes off that resistor. So we got minus 39 there. On this, that resistor, we get minus 5 on that side. But that's a 4.7 4 ohm resistor. Or at least it's supposed to be. And um, getting across that 30 volts dropping down to 5, that sounds a bit odd to me. Well, let's uh, measure that resistor and see what it uh, what it measures. Um, out of, we'll do that out of circuit as well, but uh, I'm pretty sure the bands on that were 4.7 ohm, so I suppose there's a chance that's gone high. Um, with age and heat and stress and whatnot that was going on there. Here's the uh, resistor with the bands yellow and uh, purple and uh, let's me measure that one and uh, see if it is 4.7 ah look at that she's gone really high resistance it's not registering at all on the uh, on the meter there so while I'm at it we need a new one of those and I'm going to check the capacitor that feeds that minus 30 volt rail and we'll just see what its capacitance is like at the moment it should be a thousand microfarad it's rated at 50 volt and uh, uh, pop the leads on there it's a slow capacitance meter it's just built into the multimeter function it's not a dedicated device so uh, it's a bit slow but it does read um, quite a range which is quite handy. Doesn't do ESR though. Um, that's one thing I'm looking at getting uh, as an ESR meter. Well, that's come up at 947. It's a little low, but I wouldn't have thought that would be enough to be a huge issue at the moment. And I will also check the diode that, that uh, comes off that in reverse which is giving us our negative rail. I'm sure it will be okay. Yeah, that's fine. So uh, the culprit looks like this uh, resistor. I'm pretty sure I've got another one, so I'll grab that out, pop it in, see how we go. And yes, I have disconnected this from the mains while I'm working on it. Uh, this whole area is live if it was all plugged in and uh, I would not want to get across that. So, uh, um, also discharging the main uh, capacitors is a good idea too. I had a little bit of a blip there when I was uh, soldering in the area and I connected a couple of uh, connections together. Um, it didn't damage anything, uh, but it did uh, cause the relay to close. Um, so, uh, um, that was a surprise, but uh, Something I should have thought about before, and uh, you can uh, know in advance thanks to my uh, mistake. Um, but no, nothing was damaged in the process. solder fumes probably should have
appropriate ventilation. Oh no, that that trace is lifting up off the board. That's what heat does to everything. It's still connected, however, so we should be right. Yes, oh, that looks that looks all right. I think I don't think that will be a problem at all. I might just put some solder on that just to make sure, just to reinforce that. <laughs> yeah. Since the iron's hot, strike while the iron's hot, as they say. Okay. Now. You can see with me if the voltage rail is as it should be. Uh, park my meter right there just for you because you've got to be part of the action. And it's plugged in and we've got 33.3 volts. And this is going to be a little awkward for me to keep that on there while I turn it on. I have an idea. Let's grab one of these crocodile extinction leads. Clip that on there. Now I can go one-handed and we'll turn that on and hope it stays on. It's going to be difficult because it's not in position, so we'll try that a couple of times. Ah, and it's on. And, oh, we've got 32. Excellent. Let's poke my nose around the corner at the... Uh, screen around there. Actually, why don't you come have a look with me. This is the screen on the tuner unit, which also selects various other inputs, tape, CD, what have you. And is the other one alive? It's alive! It's alive! Well done! Alright then. Another one resolved. Maybe if you've got this model, you'll be able, to, if, if you're having the same problem, uh, you'll be able to pinpoint, I don't know, I would I would presume it's a common issue with uh, this model. Um, you tend to see things like this among models, um, especially, I mean, if it's in a, a position of where things are overheating a lot, um, that's that's obviously to do with design and uh, and quite likely... Uh, replicated in, in, in other machines of the same model. So, yeah, I'm sure the owner of this will be very happy. Thanks for watching.